If you guys have followed the channel over the last few months, you've been seeing that I've been making a lot of videos on 2023 NFL rookies, talking about their insane stories, their insane rise, and how they could fit in the NFL. In today's video, we're going to talk about another under-recruited and underrated gem. He pretty much had no offers coming out of high school, and went from that to one of the best players in Tulane football history. He helped them see meteoric heights, and is now on the Tennessee Titans. He's a guy who has a chance to play right away, have a huge impact for them this year, and could have a long-term NFL career. Today, we're going to be talking about Ty J. Spears. We're going to go through his insane rise, talk about his historic career, and why he could be the secret weapon of the Titans for 2023. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover in my next video. Now, let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Ty J. Spears. Going back in time, Spears was born 45 minutes north of New Orleans in a town known as Hammond, Louisiana. He eventually moved to Ponchatoula, where he spent pretty much all of his childhood. Coming from this town, it was hard to make the NFL. Former Southern Miss defensive end Robert Henderson was the last player to go to Ponchatoula High School and get drafted in 2008. From an early age though, his dad knew that his son Ty J was different. His coach said, quote, his dad always pushed him and always made him recognize that he was different and wasn't just an average kid. His dad also guided his son to football, and when Ty J was asked what originally got him into the sport, he said, quote, just all my brothers had played and my dad. It was something my dad did, and he just put us in sports to get us out of the street life. It was a lot of things going on in the neighborhood. So putting us in football was the way to show us something different, and to us, we didn't want to be a part of the streets, and we will make something out of ourselves. Spears' first position was running back, which he immediately fell in love with, and he said the position was meant for him. He had a ton of good years in youth league playing in the backfield, and he grew up idolizing Reggie Bush, who was obviously one of the most exciting running backs to ever play in college football. He also was a New Orleans Saints, and helped them win their one Super Bowl, and that was Ty J's favorite team. By the time he was in 8th grade, he had taken football extremely seriously and was ready for the high school level. But the first roadblock that would come his way was on his first day of high school practice. As a freshman, he'd end up tearing his ACL and this would stunt his development. It would not get any easier during his sophomore year as he was not playing much and was buried on the depth chart because of so much talent around him. He was already super behind on the field and to make matters worse, he said he didn't handle it mentally well. He said, quote, since the 10th grade, I was a bad kid, but he told me that day you've got a chance to play college football, and he's changed my life ever since then. He was talking about his coach. Injuries would limit Ty J to just five games his junior season, which also stunted his growth on the recruiting trail, and it would be really tough to recover from this. His coach said, quote, before these kids play their senior year, these colleges have already made their offers for that class. I mean, you talk to Tulane and LSU people, and they've already filled up next year's class. They're working on two years from now. So, he kind of got lost in the shuffle because he was injured as a sophomore and only played five games as a junior. His coach would end up bringing him to a couple of camps because he believed that Ty J was great. He ended up going to Tulane's camp, ran great, and combining that with being a district champion in the 100 meter dash and having a great senior season, Tulane was all of a sudden wondering who the heck this kid was. Scouts said if he would have been a junior running back coming back as a senior, he would have been able to pick his school. Basically, what that means is that this guy was an underrated gem. He ended up finishing his high school career strong, as as a senior, he ran for 920 yards and also had 880 receiving yards. He finished as one of the top players in the area, but where would he go? Well, he had offers from Southern Miss, Texas State, and Tulane, and most expected him to choose the Green Wave, and most expected him to choose the Green Wave, which was obviously the best program at the time. But this would not be without one final push and one final bid from a late Power 5 offer. He said, quote, People don't know I was choosing between Tulane and Kansas State. Kansas State had come in the last two weeks, and they had a new coaching staff, and I was going over there, but I ended up just staying true. Beating Kansas State to land Spears was huge for head coach Willie Fritz, who pointed out that he sold Spears' parents on how much more expensive it would be to go to the games in Manhattan, instead of just making the quick drive to New Orleans. Both were honestly good programs for him to go to, and he ended up going to Tulane instead of Kansas State, and all along, he was doubted. He said, quote, I don't really play with a chip on my shoulder, though. A lot of people know I was under-recruited, but I'm here now, and I'm going to make the best out of my opportunity. He knew he was extremely talented, and he didn't need all that negative energy. He was ready to take over at Tulane, and was sold on the vision that Willie Fritz had for the program. His high school coach said, quote, If he stays healthy, he'll be one of the best players in the history of Tulane. That would end up coming true, but at the time, 24-7 sports thought otherwise. According to them, Spears was a three-star recruit, the number 90 running back, and the 1,403rd best player in the class of 2019. So, how would he do down in New Orleans? 
Well, let's take a look. When Spears arrived, everyone knew his potential was insane. Senior quarterback Keon Howard said, quote, from the time he got here, you knew he had some sort of special gift. He had a tremendous work ethic and he pushed the guys in that running back room to be the very best they could be. 2019, Spears was stuck on the depth chart, but ended up appearing in four games. His best game became against Missouri State as he had a rushing touchdown and an 88 yard receiving touchdown. He played in four games, finishing with 192 yards and two total touchdowns. In 2020, Spears would play a little bit more, as early on, he was extremely promising. He went for over 100 yards in their week one win against South Alabama, went for over 100 yards in a loss to Navy, and then, against Southern Miss, had two touchdowns. Both him and freshman quarterback Michael Pratt were the future of the program, and were both playing really well. But unfortunately, in that Southern Miss game, tragedy would happen, as on his second touchdown run, Spears would tear his ACL for the second time, and his meniscus went too. This was absolutely brutal and sent him into a pretty dark spiral, but he'd end up figuring it out, getting back on track, and started to really take off in 2021. The first five games of the season he was pretty limited before he would absolutely take over at the end. He scored a touchdown against number 21 SMU, went for over 100 yards in a touchdown against number two Cincinnati, had a touchdown against UCF, over 100 yards against Tulsa, over 100 yards and two touchdowns against USF, and then against Memphis, had a career game. Against the Tigers, he went for 264 yards and two touchdowns, and that is when the world began to know who Ty J was. For the season, he finished with 863 yards and nine scores. If he left for the NFL, I'm sure he could have been a late round pick, but he decided to come back. It ended up working out for him, as he had three touchdowns in their opener against Massachusetts, as he had three touchdowns in their opener against UMass, and then two weeks later went for over 100 yards and two touchdowns against Southern Miss. Just like last year, his first six games were kind of slow, but he went out on top. He went for 150 yards and two touchdowns against USF, over 100 yards and a touchdown against Memphis, 157 yards and a touchdown against Tulsa, 130 yards against UCF, 121 yards against SMU, and 181 yards and two touchdowns against Cincinnati. He'd help them get to the American Conference Championship, where in a rematch with UCF, he'd once again go crazy. He went for 199 yards and a touchdown, and helped Tulane win the American Athletic Conference Championship. This was absolutely a huge deal, as last year, he finished 5th in the FBS in rushing with a total of 1,581 yards and finished tied for 3rd in rushing touchdowns with 19. His best performance, though, would come in his last game. In the Cotton Bowl against USC, Spears literally put the team on his back as he went for 205 yards on 17 carries against a national power. Everyone doubted Tulane would even compete in this game, but Spears found the end zone four times. He was named the Cotton Bowl MVP after rushing for 205 yards and four scores and helped them upset USC in an absolute thriller. In four years, Spears ran for 2,910 yards and 31 touchdowns, while also catching 48 passes for 564 yards and three scores. He went down as one of the best players in Tulane history, just like his high school coach thought, and now it was time for the NFL. Head coach Willie Fritz said that Spears' only weakness was that he hammers himself for mistakes. Another weakness that Scout saw was that he was a little bit small, but other than that, Spears was definitely a big-time prospect. As the draft would go on, he'd see his childhood team of the Saints draft TC running back Kendra Miller, and he was worried that everyone at the watch party would have to come back for day three. But instead, 10 picks later, he was taken by the Tennessee Titans, and they were absolutely pumped. He was taken with the 81st overall pick in the third round, and the Titans got an absolute steal. Spears said, quote, The Tennessee running back coach told me he was standing on the table for me. If you've got a coach standing on a table for you, the stars aren't the limit. We're about to go to Mars. Right now, Spears will probably be that second running back behind Derrick Henry, unless something crazy happens, and should be the kind of guy who's a great backup, can catch passes out of the backfield, and becomes one of their better weapons on the team. Despite all the doubts, Spears has somehow made it. He's been through two torn ACLs, and everyone was telling him he could never do it or wouldn't make it, but he bet on himself and ended up winning. In total, he'd become one of the best running backs in school history, won a conference championship, beat USC in the Cotton Bowl, and now ended up getting drafted into the NFL. All for a guy who really only had offers from Texas State and Southern Miss at one point. It was never easy for him, but his quarterback Michael Pratt said, quote, everything that you see right now is earned. None of this was given to him, and he has just kept battling and persevered. That is the insane rise of Ty J Spears, and I'm excited to see what he does with the Titans this year, and is one of those guys I'm really going to be rooting for. But what do you guys think? If you're a Titans or a Tulane fan, what do you think of Spears? Who's another rookie I could cover next? And what topic should I cover before the college football season starts? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. 
But until next time, peace.